cool fill, right? I mean, it's nothing spectacular, but sounds nice and solid, and it kind of gets the job done with a little dose of style and class. Probably the sort of fill that if I was to show that to a very beginner student, they'd be sitting there bewildered, thinking about where all that vocabulary comes from. Probably be thinking two things. A, well, what was he doing? And B, well, that's way out of my reach. But more often than not, it's not actually that unreachable in the immediate learning future. Now, this is where I bring out the magic phrase that to me is the key to building vocabulary. And the phrase is this, if you can do that, then maybe you can do this. But actually strike the word maybe. If you can do that, then you can do this. Now, there are usually two main challenges for students wishing to build their vocabulary, i.e. freely express themselves on the drum set. And let's get one thing clear. When I talk about students, because I mention the word students a lot in my videos, I'm talking about all of us. Uh, the first challenge is technique, as in actually being able to physically do something. So for example, this film included a little bit of work on hand-foot coordination, so we have to set about working on that to be able to actually do it. But that's tangible. We know what we need to do and we can set about doing it. The second challenge is imagination. Now, imagination by its very nature is a lot less tangible. We need to create something that we haven't created yet. We need to imagine it first. So how do we start? Well, first of all, we have to understand the premise that we can only learn something new out of what we already know. And you can see this in all walks of life. If you need to learn a new skill, then somebody will explain this to you based on a reference point that we're already familiar with. If you can do that, then you can do this. So my stunning hand-foot coordination fill that will elude a new student is actually a great example of where vocabulary can be built out of this phrase. For example, a new student might already know a fill such as this one. So for a new student, that's relatively easy to actually produce. Four notes distinctly placed on each element of the drum set. So then the conversation will probably go something like this. Well, if you can play four notes on each element, for example, the snare, right, left, right, left, four notes, well, maybe you can play those four notes, but the first two on the hands, right, left, and the second two on the bass drum. And then you can do that on each element. So immediately we have this. And then all we have to do is just to make sure that we stay just with the hands on the last element so that we can actually come back down on the groove a little bit easier after the fill. Now we're just taking what we already know and adapting it to create vocabulary. Same amount of notes, same note values, and this can work wonders in many, many examples. If you can do this, then you can do this. If you can do this, then you can do this. And if you do this, then you can do this. Okay, so obviously we need to develop a certain amount of technical proficiency to be able to actually pull these ideas off. But developing the imagination is equally as important. And this is also true when it comes to a higher playing level and students that may have a higher technical aptitude. In fact, I was applying this idea while working with one of my more advanced students on the Dave Weckl track, Spur of the Moment. Now here's Raphael, who is the guy, incidentally, that you see being constantly abused in my videos, but who is in fact a great student and a great teacher, working on the final fill of the piece. Now this fill starts on the one, it's three beats long, and the aim is to land on the snare drum on the fourth beat of the bar so that we can play those last two punches which happen on the E and the AND of four. 
and to get comfortable with landing on the snare drum at the right time, rather than just flying away and missing the snare drum on the fourth beat of the bar, what we need to do is to frame the fill. Now I mentioned framing in a previous video and what it actually consists of is playing something relatively simple at first, not because that's going to be the end result, but because it enables us to see what we're working with so we can make sure we come down on the four and play those last two punches. So this is the fill we designed to do just that. So once that was done and we were comfortable with landing on the fourth beat of the bar, then we applied the, if you can do that, you can do this rule. And what we came up with is this. If we can play three beats of 16th notes, which makes 12 notes, then we can play 24 32nd notes. How can we divide up those 24 32nd notes? Well, four groups of six. Right, left, right, left, foot, foot. If we do that four times, we will land on the snare on the fourth beat of the bar. It's a mathematical fact. But for it to work, you need to respect three criteria. You need to start in the right place. You need to play the right amount of notes. And you need to respect the note value. If you do those three things, it will work. So that worked, but for me, starting the fill there, bang on the one, just sounds a little bit too scholarly. I'd like to start my fill a little bit earlier, just after that triplet section that finishes on the four. So I could start my fill on the and of four. Now that and of four is an eighth note, which gives me four 30-second notes to play with. And I could play those four 30-second notes as simply right, left, foot, foot, and then proceed to play the rest of the fill that I already know. So that would give me a nice kind of wickly sounding fill. Wickly, is that, does that work? Wickly? Is that actually a real adjective? No? No. <laughs> <laughs>